Well, good evening, uh, FBN. Uh, it's good to join you all uh, as we look into Proverbs chapter 3, uh, start nearing our way towards the end of this chapter. Um, just to acknowledge uh, what you clearly um, are already seeing, this is a different setting uh, than what we've been doing. Uh, we are in my office. And so, kind of plain Jane, uh, there's not going to be cats walking around in the background or anything like there have been in uh, my previous, uh, in the previous Bible studies. But listen, also, uh, unfortunately, um, since we're starting to come back to the office and everybody's, uh, we're, we're producing everything from, from in-house now, and um, that we won't be um, in my house, which means my wife won't be a part of this with me uh, as much anymore. And so I know many of you have said um, that you've really appreciated that and that if that ever changes, that you'll boycott. And so it's time to, uh, it's time to boycott because she's not going to be able to be uh, here with me uh, to do this. Um, but uh, I'm grateful to just be able to, uh, you know, focus some of these things from, uh, from the office and from the church. And um, certainly with our gatherings um, starting back up with uh, this week being relaunch week, which is great. Um, on that note, um, part of relaunch week was going to be to try to start doing Wednesday uh, night Bible studies in person. So just a quick explanation there. Uh, we've heard some, from some of our faithful Wednesday night attenders that uh, they wouldn't be able to because um, either the, the, the child care options aren't available with FBN kids or with um, uh, with nurseries. Also, some of our uh, higher risk folks um, weren't comfortable coming back yet. And so we just thought it'd be better to just put out uh, maybe a, a slightly more brief, uh, just encouragement Bible study from, uh, from the Word from here on out. Um, something that's still accessible uh, for the many, um, rather than something that's so isolated and it would be a little more difficult to record and produce um, um, if we did it live for just a few. And so I hope that makes sense to you all. And I hope you're also taking advantage of your, your other gatherings, whether that be kind of a, uh, off night Sunday school gatherings or discipleship groups, or we'll definitely have, um, our Sunday morning gatherings once again uh, as a, as an option. So I hope you're still getting that connection and getting that time. And I hope that this time would serve, um, maybe more purely for just Bible study, uh, but still to study the Bible together um, and to engage on it as we are able to um, through uh, all the other formats. I hope that's uh, understandable to you all as we continue to figure out what the best way of ministry is uh, during this time. Um, so with all that said, um, different context, different everything kind of going on right now. With all that said, uh, why don't we pray uh, and then ask God to just focus our hearts uh, so that we can look uh, candidly at Proverbs chapter 3, um, a pretty cut and dry passage, to be honest with you. Um, and so um, I think it's pretty clear, um, but we'll engage on it and um, we'll just ask him to do uh, a wonderful work through his word in our lives this evening. All right, let's pray. God, thank you so much for uh, the time that we have. Uh, even though we are uh, in different rooms, different homes, God, we have the time to, to join in spirit and unity uh, in your scripture in Proverbs chapter 3 as we continue to look at just your wisdom for living in our lives and particularly this evening as we look at just uh, what you have called us to be in regards to how we treat each other. God, how how just the magnitude um, of, of what that means in the body of Christ and also in our communities and in our, our extra relationships, God, with those who, who may not know you, how pivotal um, a, a, uh, a loving expression and a, um, a fair way of treating others, how pivotal that can be uh, for someone coming to know you. So God, I pray that you would do that work in our lives tonight, that you would use your word to encourage us towards that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Cool. Well, if you have uh, a Bible, let's go to Proverbs chapter 3. Um, we're going to look at verses 27 uh, through 32 this evening. 27 through 32. Um, 27 through 35. It's really kind of a twofold thing going on here. One singular thought, but kind of a twofold thing certainly under the, the whole umbrella of, of the wisdom of God that all of Proverbs is about. 27 through 32 really focuses in on, on how we treat others, how we treat our neighbors, how we treat those around us. 
And then verses 33 through 35, um, we'll look at how God, uh, how God responds to the way that we treat others. Okay, and so we'll look at that next week, and we've got some interesting thoughts there uh, already. But for tonight, we want to look specifically at just, at just us, uh, how we treat other people, how we uh, uh, serve other people. What is it um, that we are called to do? And the first thing that he says in verse 27 is really to be a withholder. Um, oh, sorry, I started off on a, a terrible foot here. Um, to, to not be a withholder, okay? Uh, to not be a withholder. He says in verse 27, When it is in your power, don't withhold good from the one to whom it belongs. Don't say to your neighbor, go away, come back later. I'll give it to you tomorrow when it is there with you. Okay? Don't be a withholder. Now, the first thing he says there, which is worth mentioning, is this idea of of when it is in your power. Um, Have you ever met those people, or maybe you are those people who think, you know what, I have all the power in the world. I can do everything. I can be a part of every single thing. I can have every minute booked up in my calendar uh, and just be going and going and going and and rushing and rushing and rushing and always behind and always, you know, a a little cluttered. But a lot of times it's because people don't really have a good grasp of this when it's in your power. And a lot of times people attempt to live and do and, and, and embrace things that it's not in your power. You can't do it. Um, In fact, God would probably say, I don't want you to do it. You need to go to bed. You need to get some good rest so that you can do the lesser things and the better, so that you can do the better things, though they are fewer, you can do the better things best rather than the the shotgun of things, uh, the scattered of things, very scattered and, and, um, you know, less adequately. Does that make sense? When it is in your power, right? In this case, if you have the goodness, um, if you can have that expression, if you have that thing that um, you, you are to give, then, then you should do it. It's in your power and you, you need to do it. But it is a good idea, just an example of when it's not in your power, right? Um, an example of so many people um, who were like, well, I, I'm going to sign, sign up for nursery every single time I can. You're just talking about church service, for example. Sign up for nursery every single can, every every time I can. Sign up for Connect Team every every time I can. Uh, FBN Kids every time I can. I, I want to be a part of the youth group. I want to be part of of all of the teams that I, I possibly can. And so, what you have is somebody who who has their hand in so many little things, but they're not fully invested in anything. Right? Wouldn't it maybe be better to do one or two things um, exceptionally? And, and wonderfully, instead of doing 20 things um, with tension and half-heartedness and, and constantly, um, you know, um, trying to figure out like your own schedule and not being able to keep up, what, wouldn't it be better? Wouldn't you actually have the opportunity to bless more people uh, more fully? Right? Uh, another example of this I always think about is just, you know, we have... Uh, a benevolence fund, we have food pantry, and we can't really control, you know, how people use this stuff. We have the wonderful opportunity to really bless some people in their times of need. But on the other hand, uh, a lot of times what it is, is, you know, people take advantage of maybe our ministry and, and what it is, is nothing more than a handout to them. Most of that depends on them. You know what I mean? Um, our job isn't necessarily to, to parse every single person's, you know, um, background, but to just be a, uh, a giver of God's grace, you know, whatever form that takes, um, whether or not it's just a handout depends on them. But sometimes, yeah, sh- sure, uh, people take advantage and there are those who, who want the handouts. OK, um, there's no life change that comes with it. It's just something that gets them through their day with which, which has some worth in and of itself. But what if thinking about just the generational cycle of poverty, how poverty begets poverty begets poverty? What if? Right. Um, we had a ministry um, that said to that person who's asked for their light bill to be paid, you know, 17 times and has needed so much benevolence help. And, you know, what if we said we want you and your family to come here for financial counseling uh, for, um, you know, we'll, we'll certainly help you kind of get you on your feet, uh, get you set up with your living situation, get you money, um, 
just get, get you fiscally responsible. What if we had the opportunity to just pour all that effort into one family um, and, and break the cycle of poverty in that family? Think about the good that that could do for their children, for their children's children, and to do it all in the name of Christ, to, to directly connect um, that with, with the love of Jesus Christ. Right? It's just a thought. Well, that'd be a cool ministry, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Uh, it would be a way to focus in, right? To focus in, to do what is in your power instead of um, to do fully what is in your power and to do it well instead of doing so many things that aren't really in your power because you can't keep up, you can't invest fully, right? When it is in your power, don't withhold good from the one to whom it belongs. Don't say to your neighbor, go away, come back later, I'll give it tomorrow, when it is there with you, okay? Um, I can't tell you how many times I talk to young people who say, you know, my dad never really told me he loved me, you know? Um, or I always, you know, I always wanted this or you know, I wanted that. Like my, my dad never disciplined me. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've, I've experienced that with young people who, who come from backgrounds and come from homes where just the simple expression of goodness was tough. You know, I don't know what it is, if it was just a vulnerability thing or, um, you know, what, what the issue was. But listen, part of just doing good, not withholding good is just seeing the opportunities to give it and then to give it, um, to give it freely because you have it. Um, certainly in the expression of your words, the expression of your affection. To give it, don't withhold it, but, but give it. Um, when it comes to tangible things, of course, you know, um, if you owe somebody something or somebody has done something praiseworthy and you, you, you had already agreed upon a reward for that, you know, whatever it is, I mean, to stick to your word and to give it, especially if you have it, right? If you already have it, don't wait till tomorrow and there's no need to, to delay, right? Don't delay. Um, you don't have to pray about whether or not you need to tell somebody you love them. Just express what you, uh, the goodness uh, that you are supposed to express, right? Don't say to your neighbor, go away, come back later, I'll give it tomorrow when it is there with you. Don't be a withholder, all right? Don't be a withholder and don't um, delay uh, because you're power tripping somehow, right? I have what you need, uh, but I'm going to let this thing linger on a little bit longer just to remind you uh, that I have what you need, right? Uh, when I was growing up, my dad, uh, I, I, my, one of my favorite things was to get a big bowl of cereal and to lay on the ground and to eat it. And I always remember my dad coming by and anytime I had a big bowl of cereal, what he would always do is get to wherever I, wa I was and he would take my spoon and he would just shovel, um, you know, a scoop or two. And he knew it frustrated me and he would always do it. And I always thought, I don't know if this was what he was doing, but I always just assumed that what he was doing was really saying, remember who bought you this cereal? I think that's what he was trying to remind me of all the time, right? Which, of course, he bought me the cereal, so he has uh, a little bit of freedom there to power trip a little bit. But listen, when it comes to our relationship with our neighbors, when it comes to our relationship with um, um, anybody really in the community of Christ and outside of that, uh, we cannot power trip um, where we um, delay um, our, our goodness to others or where we even hold it over them, right? That's not what this is talking about. This is talking about being generous givers, not withholders, okay? So are you a giver or are you a withholder? Is it easy for you uh, to give and to express or do you typically hold on to that stuff or do you delay in your expression of it? Okay, uh, next he says, don't plan, verse 29, don't plan any harm against your neighbor for he trusts you and lives near you. Okay. Um, everybody is somewhat responsible for their own situations. We understand this, right? Um, like for example, you know, on my block, um, if there are some neighbors I'm having a hard time with, I can remind myself first, I chose to buy this house. Second, I could move if I wanted to. Um, you know what I mean? Like everybody has some control on, on their experience. Um, 
and the same is uh, the same is true you know at your workplace um, at your you know on your on your team like you can always choose to not partake you could always choose to find another job there is always a level there where just by the fact of us living on the same block or working in the same company or um, playing on the same team, uh, there is a level of trust that's just implied and understood that we are in this together. And so there's going to be an element of us take uh, uh, of us kind of protecting each other and trusting each other in this, right? The same is certainly true in the body of Christ as we come together in the body. I mean, we have got to cry with those who cry, mourn with those who mourn, weep with those who weep, but also rejoice with those who rejoice. Like we've got to, we've got to do all of it at like supernatural connected levels, you know? Um, but the more that we can do this also with those around us in these other secular contexts, the more opportunity that we have to share the love of Christ in those places. And the more that we can go into those places, into the neighborhoods, into the workplaces, and, and prove to people by our actions and our good deeds that we actually have zero ounce of desire to cause any harm to anybody. I want you to trust me. I want you to understand that you have nothing to fear here. That I'm going to be a partner with you because we live on the same block. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, let you borrow the stuff from my desk because we work it together. And we, and I'm going to help you out if you have questions. Like there's no fear here. You have nothing to harm from me. I wonder. Uh, if the people, your constituents, the people in your life, the people around you, uh, your employees and your bosses, if they, ha if they have that view of you. Or the other side is this, are they walking on eggshells? Right? They're, they're not really sure where you're at. Uh, so they're, they're uncomfortable, they're kind of walking on eggshells. They're not 100% they're not sure what you're about. Listen, you need to make it clear what you're about. Make it clear that you, you are not here. To harm, you're not here to hurt, you're here to help and to serve because genuinely your heart is for them. It's not just about yourself. Listen, um, when people uh, create this world where everybody around them is walking on eggshells around them, usually what that means is that this person here is, is, is overly concerned with themselves, with how they're being treated, with, how, uh, with what people are doing to them, and as a result, they react in a way that puts other people on, on eggshells. Listen, you can't be about that. And the only way to break that uh, is to be genuinely focused about everybody else. Serve other people. Do your work. Um, um, take care of your yard, you know, but... but but serve people, love people, treat other people uh, in a way that says to them, listen, I trust you, I want you to trust me, and you have nothing to fear here, okay? Uh, one, of this way, one of the ways it looks like in verse 30, it says, don't accuse anyone without cause when he has done you no harm. Don't accuse anyone without cause, man. I can't tell you how many people's, um, how many stories I've heard of people whose lives got totally wrecked uh, because of nothing more than an accusation. Uh, youth pastors who were accused of, of uh, some mis misconduct with one of their students. Um, you've heard the stories of people who were locked up in prison for 30, 40 years only to be pr pr proven innocent you know, in that amount of time. And so you know, they're, they're released from jail and they're given a million bucks or whatever and say, sorry, and then they've locked them, but they're out 30, 40 years, you know. It's crazy. What a, you know, a false accusation can ruin a person's life. Um, we cannot be quick to accuse. Uh, and even when we do, uh, follow the biblical principle first, right? Um, if you are unsure that someone has done something, but you, 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 you think there might be, approach the person and have a candid conversation about, about it with them. Uh, instead of just jumping to the boss or jumping to the, the next guy up who's probably going to come down with a heavy hand based on whatever you say without any proof. Right? Don't accuse anyone without cause, especially when he's done no harm to you. Right? It's this kind of a childish way of acting. Right? I can't tell you how many times a day my girls, you know, I'll say, well, who did this? Who did that? Why didn't you put your bike up? You know, all that kind of stuff. And it's always someone's fault all the time. Right? Um, and, and we know adults like this. Um, they're like Teflon. Nothing sticks to them. Right? Um, it's always someone else's fault all the time. 
Listen, we as believers, first of all, need to not be quick to just blame everybody else, not be so defensive, uh, but to be vulnerable, to be uh, honest about when we um, do something wrong, and to just own it. To just own it, right? Um, there's no reason. There's no reason it doesn't serve anybody to be defensive and to, to blame others and to falsely accuse others of different things, especially when there's no proof. And again, you have an option before, you know, from nothing to tell the higher up who's going to come down with a heavy hand. There's another thing here that people just oh, so often forget is have an honest, candid conversation where you approach them smartly um, and, and humbly and just have a conversation. I don't know why people refuse that so much, but listen, we have options outside of just all of this other stuff. And then lastly, he says in verse 31, don't envy a violent man or choose any of his ways for the devious are detestable to the Lord, but he is a friend to the upright. Okay. Don't envy a violent man. Certainly don't envy. This is a principle that we should always live by because envy, envy direct, runs directly against contentment, which is something that we are called to. But envy is, you know, is something that we are to stand against. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 1 takes it a step further. It says, don't be envious of evil men. Don't even desire to be with them. Right? Um, don't be envious of evil men nor desire to be with them. Listen, if you are here, or not here, but if you're listening and you are envious of people who live according to the world, right? Um, and, and the result is that they're actually, if there's actually a temptation for you to follow their path, then it's probably best to just not even be around them so you're not faced with that envy all the time, right? Um, this is the same with social media, Facebook, and all that kind of stuff. Listen, if you can't get on Facebook without envying what the people of the world have, then don't get on Facebook because it's going to be really hard to be content in the Lord if that's the case. Okay. And listen, the, the brass tacks of all of this um, is that if we want to truly live out Jesus and be the love of Jesus to, to our body of community of believers and also to others, then we've got to understand that this life is just not about what is done to us, how people treat us. Um, it's not about what we can receive. We have such a tendency to live these bubble lives where everything feeds us, whether it's good stuff like Bible studies and church and uh, service. and all, It's all about us. Or it's bad stuff like you know, a porn addiction or, or alcoholism or all that kind of stuff where, again, it's just all about feeding us. And we live this life of just feeding and feeding and feeding us. When the core of the gospel is about worship to the Father and burning that feeding off by serving people. And listen, this is exactly what Jesus did in Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Right? The God, the only one in the whole world and all creation who is actually the one worthy of everyone serving and giving and treating. I mean, he's the only one who could sinlessly be concerned with how people are treating him and, and serving him. And yet he came in the form of a man and served and died for people. We've got to get out of our own heads, out of our own bubbles of self-feeding. And we've got to start burning that stuff off serving people, certainly those in the body of Christ, equipping each other to do the work of the ministry and advancing the gospel by serving other people radically with generosity, not withholding, but with generosity, um, with, with trust and, and being a safe place, you know, where they don't have to worry about harm and, and certainly not envying um, uh, their pursuits and the things that, that aren't good, but by, by being content in what the Lord has given us and letting that be a, a wonderful display to people around us. Listen, we've got to treat people fairly, to treat people well, to treat people like Christ treated people. And in this, man, we will advance the gospel, we'll change lives, God will use His church. Uh, to bless this world, uh, to bring others to Him. So listen, I hope that God does this work in your heart as He um, continues to, to kind of grow in my heart in, in these ways as well. I'm certainly not uh, a master of any of this, but listen, don't be a withholder. Don't play in harm. Um, don't accuse and don't envy. 
but give everybody a taste uh, of what Jesus, uh, of Jesus' love and what he might have for them uh, if they would give their lives to him. Um, I pray that God would do this work in your heart. Um, love you guys. I'm grateful for you all. Um, we'll see you on Sunday and we'll worship together. Uh, looking forward to it. Thanks.